Our next presenter today is Guido Schnabel at Clemson University, presenting on my IPM. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I was asked to give a little brief overview of uh, the history and purpose of the my IPM smartphone app. That's a project that uh, uh, Dr. Brett Blau and I have been working on for the last several years, and um, it's been growing. And um, I'm, I'm still very excited about it. So here's how it all happened. So first of all, I better, better introduce myself a little bit. I'm a plant pathologist by training. I have a research and an extension appointment about 50-50. And in my extension endeavor, what I need to do is provide our fruit growers in South Carolina with the necessary necessary means to manage their diseases. So I do this with field trips and with production talks and several other things. But in one of those field trips or production talks uh, many years ago, a young uh, farmer approached me and he said, well, Guido, I've, I've been, you know, studying those pesticides and uh, I've started my own spreadsheet on Excel with active ingredients and, and trade names and, and frag codes and modes of action and all these things and resistance occurrence. And uh, I said, well, th this is great, but it also uh, made me wonder, okay, there is certainly a, um, a need here for this kind of information. And so I reviewed what we had and you know, what we all know we have is are the spray guides. Uh, to the left are our peach spray guide and the, you know, the apple spray guides, the, the small fruit spray guides. They're all structured in, in different ways. Most of them are structured in a way that, that at a certain phenological stage, there's a recommendation for cultural control, biological control, chemical use, and so on. Um, but the growers still have to choose from a plethora of active ingredients and trade names. Uh, yes, the, the FRAC codes and the IRAC codes, um, they're all listed, but it's not displayed in a way that is easily digestible. So there's, you've got all these different modes of actions. You've got those IRAC and FRAC and HRAC codes. You've got those different trade names for the same chemistries. Each crop and each pest and each disease is, is different. So it's, for somebody who doesn't do this all the time, it, is, it can be very confusing. So I started a while ago uh, creating other spreadsheets that might clarify um, this a little bit. So I started like uh, maybe 10 years ago, uh, creating those, those color codes. And that was inspired by, um, I think it was um, uh, Andy Wyanant up, up, up north. Uh, he he uh, produced something similar to vegetables, and I thought that was pretty cool. So I asked him if I could copy his idea, and uh, so I created that for for strawberries and for peach. And that was that was a, a over you know a couple of years. It was uh, received very well, but still there are limitations. As you can see, it's just a one-page kind of thing, and you've got to squeeze everything in. Uh, if there's more active ingredients and more trade names coming. Uh, you're going to get in trouble. Actually, I couldn't put any trade names in here. So it was just uh, one more means to an end, but it wasn't the final product that I was happy with. So that led us to think about how can we actually produce a better way to communicate this rather complex information with our stakeholders. And that resulted in the My IPM version and the My IPM version. Uh, and and uh, if you open up your app, uh, this is sort of what you see. Uh, you, you choose a crop, you choose a disease. And if you choose to look at the active ingredient table, you will see that the active ingredients are all listed uh, and color coded. They're color coded by um, mode of action. Uh, they're color coded by a frac code. The same is true for the insecticides. They're color coded with the IREC codes, um, you can, if you just push um, on the, on the, on the uh, header, you can sort the, 
the active ingredients by frac code, which I did in this particular picture. Um, you can sort them uh, with increasing numbers or decreasing numbers. And you can easily see, okay, of the 711 mixtures, we've got three of them. Of the seven frac code, we've got two of them. And then we've got a few other mixtures over here. Um, so this is basically in, in a nutshell, what's available for the grower to control this particular disease in this particular crop. And you can also sort these active ingredients, not only by frac code, but also by frac risk and by efficacy. So that was, a, that was progress and that was the initial uh, birth of my IPM. That was the, the original thinking that, that we're gonna create an interactive table that makes navigation easier. Uh, much more has been added to, to the app and I'm gonna talk about this a little bit, but here's sort of an overview of how it all came, came about. In, in January, 2012, first discussions were initiated. It was right after I talked to, to this young uh, grower. Um, planning was done and I tried to get funding also for this project, but it turns out that people didn't think that I could do it because um, I didn't have a history of making apps. Uh, and so a lot of my um, requests for funding were denied. Um, but I did find a student, a suitable student programmer at Clemson University who worked with me on this project. And I paid him with funds that I had saved up from you know, chemical companies. And uh, you know, those, those are my reserves. Um, in 2014, we then released the first version of the My IPM app uh, as an Android and the iOS version. And that was just peach and strawberries. And it was just diseases because I'm the peach and strawberry disease guy. So that was like the prototype. And that worked pretty well. And it um, uh, made other people also get interested. And we had our first annual workshop in Clemson where I invited uh, specialists from other states that would deal maybe with different crops, even, even different disciplines like insects and weeds. Um, uh, we invited those to, the, to that first uh, workshop and we decided to create a, uh, the MyIPM version for the Northeastern diseases, for Northeastern, for Southeastern pests and for Southeastern diseases. The reason we did this was the people weren't sure if we could actually merge um, all of the information into one app because there are some differences in um, recommendations when you go from north to south. So we, we said, okay, we're going to do it separate and we also do the, the, the disease and the pest separate. Uh, but that didn't last very long. And when we had our follow-up meetings, uh, it became clear that actually this was just uh, an annoyance, especially if you had to um, update the My, App, the My IPM app, you had to update three of them. Uh, and it turned out that really the similarities outweighed the dissimilarities uh, in, in recommendations. So what little bit of, of sp specific Northern information was there or specific Southern information or recommendations was there, we could deal with this in other ways. And that led to the merger of my IPM with the support of funding. We then eventually did get funded by the Southern Region IPM Center, by the North American Strawberry Grower Association and by the uh, Southern Region Small Fruit Consortium. And that helped us merge those three into one single app. app. So that one single app contains several different crops, apple, blackberries, blueberries, bunch grapes, cherries, cranberries, peach, pear, strawberries, pecan now even. Uh, and, and over time, more and more were added. And over time, more and more disease specialists and insect specialists were added to the project. And now we've got more than a dozen specialists working on this. We meet once a year. Um, um, for a workshop here in Clemson and uh, update the app and talk about what, what could be improved. Um, these people are from different universities. They're from uh, PSU, from NCSU, University of Massachusetts, Cornell, UGA, Maryland, Florida, 
Mississippi, Clemson University. Southern IPM Center is actually hosting the app. They're helping us keeping it all running. Uh, and also the uh, IPM Institute of North America with Peter Wirtz are involved. They're letting us uh, use their uh, pesticide risk data. So the app is designed to supplement the regional fruit management guides, not to substitute, to supplement those guides. The guides have a lot of information, some of which is not in the app and vice versa. The app has a lot of information that might not be in the, um, in the spray guides, for example, the pictures or the audio files, these kinds of things. Also, the interactive tables are not uh, in, in the spray guides. Uh, you can download them for free in the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. So you can download the, the, the app for free. And that was very important to us because we didn't want a fee to be a hindrance of anybody wanting to try it. Um, so it's, it's just part of our extension work, part of what we're doing. And so there was really no need to charge for it. Why do we make this app? Uh, for four different reasons, I think, uh, to provide growers and agents with relevant and up-to-date information anytime, anywhere, because they all have their, uh, their phone always with them in the field, in the office, everywhere they go. To integrate pest diagnostics, spray guide information, fact sheet info, disease and resistance management recommendations, uh, to simplify information with interactive tables and pictures and audio and also embedded links to other websites and videos and to provide a resource for the specialists, the growers and the field crew um, with regard to trade names, active ingredients, diagnostics, IPM overview and so on. So what's next? The, the current MyPM, My IPM app covers fruits. And it's, it's missing a few sections here and there that we're still working on. Um, for example, blackberry pests, I don't have anybody working on that one. Um, we, are still, we are now currently working on the weed sections. Uh, we decided together with uh, Katie Jennings and, and Wayne Mitchell, we decided that uh, we're gonna for now keep it at two weed sections, one for perennial crops and one for plastic culture. So we're not probably not gonna do a weed section for each crop. Um, that would be too much. Uh, Dr. F uh, Francis Wright Jones out of uh, Clemson University is spearheading the My IPM Row Crops um, app, which is um, which is now in the beta version stage. So specialists are being recruited to fill in the information. The coding is already there. the 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 app is already uh, in existence. And I think uh, very soon it's going to be published. So I'm excited about this. Uh, all they had to do is basically take the code and get the team in place and feed the app with the relevant information. Uh, I think also under discussion are uh, my IPM version for turf and, and ornamentals. And I've been getting also a lot of requests by growers, uh, but also some specialists to uh, implement a my IPM for vegetables. So at this point, um, I can either take some questions or we can just jump into a little three minute movie that my postdoc made. It's a little documentary about the My IPM app. So what do you want to do? Jump into the movie first or? Uh, I think that video is pretty impressive myself. Um... All right, so let's do this. So I'm going to share my screen again and we're going to and while the video is going, people think of questions. Do you have one for Guido? You know questions are coming up. All right, that sounds good. Now this video, um, because of bandwidth, the picture might be a little um, uh, stumbly or, or a little bit pixelated, but the audio is, is okay. So hopefully it's gonna be okay. Uh, if you want to see it again on, on YouTube or Vimeo, I'm going to play it from, from the Vimeo web website, then, then feel free to just uh, search in the search bar for my IPM. You'll, you will find it right away. Um, but bear with me if the, if the video quality is not uh, 100%.
Jeff is a fruit grower, enjoying a beautiful day in his orchard. But something bothers him. There's something wrong with his trees, and he's not sure what to do about it. No problem. Jeff has already downloaded the My IPM app, and it works offline. Everything Jeff needs to know about diseases and pests is right at his fingertips. Scrolling through the picture gallery, Jeff recognizes the disease he's dealing with. He finds valuable information and even listens to his favorite extension educator, explaining it like he's right there. Brown rot is consistently the most important disease of peaches in the Southeast. Now that he knows about the disease, managing it doesn't have to be stressful either. With My IPM, Jeff can look at the trade names of registered products to control the disease. He can navigate an interactive table and find the best products, rates, pre-harvest intervals, and re-entry intervals for different fungicides and insecticides, then sort by each. He can even learn which chemicals are least harmful to the environment and to bees. But Jeff grows multiple fruit crops and wonders if his choice could also manage diseases in his other fields. Using the My IPM search bar, you can quickly see which crops and diseases a product is registered for, at what rate it is used, and how effective it will be. Tapping any of the fields will reveal even more information. Fungicide resistance can be an annoying problem. But don't worry, Jeff. My IPM has you covered. See the section on active ingredients? Yes, right there. Jeff can now sort chemicals by groups and generate a plan to rotate or mix them for best performance. Information about resistance risk for each product will remind Jeff to be careful and follow strict resistance management guidelines. But chemical control isn't everything, and my IPM knows it. A good approach integrates chemical and non-chemical methods for best pest and disease management results. Got problems with insects as well, Jeff? Problem solved. This app's for that, too. Goodbye, disease. Goodbye, pests. Nice work, Jeff. My IPM. Available for free on Google Play and the Apple Store. Regularly updated and expanded by university fruit specialists. So we do have a little bit of time for probably one question for Guido. If someone doesn't have one, I can think of one. Okay, shoot. So designing apps and keeping them simple is hard <laughs> because keeping it simple is really, really hard. There's always new things that people want. Throughout that entire yes. timeline, starting in 2012 through now and going into splitting this up with multiple commodities, how are you maintaining a focus on what the app needs to do? Uh, I think, you know, now that, that's a good, good question. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's several things that you can do to satisfy collaborator desires and needs that are um, fairly easy to be implemented. Um, and then there are several that would cause major headaches. And I stayed away from the major headaches ones, uh, such as live, uh, taking picture of a live disease or a pest and having your, your app go through a bunch of pictures and, and, and give, give the, give give the user an answer of what that is you know some sort of a diagnostic automated diagnostic tool uh, or a chat we we had one um, session where we discussed the availability of um, live specialists input where when you use the app uh, there could be a chat box 
uh, where you say, okay, uh, I'm, I'm here in my orchard and I see this pest and the, the app says it's this pest, uh, what do I do? Um, and, you know, I have a specific info, some specific information. That text could be sent to the specialist right away. And the specialist could text back like within a few seconds. Um, so that would be an awesome feature to have, but it's, it's a nightmare uh, when it comes to getting it implemented and getting everybody on board to actually answer on time and be always available. Um, so we, we stayed away from some of those things. I've always been impressed that you've had, you have these annual meetings where you have all your specialists come in and you all sit down in a room and update this thing that you've all managed to have the conversations. Um, have there been other things that have come out of the fact you guys have an annual meeting every year? Uh, certainly, I mean, with, with the, the more people are involved, the more different opinions you have. Yeah, that's just the way it is. I, I started out just discussing it with Mong Jun and then later with, with Mong Jun, who is, who is at uh, the University of Maryland right now, and then later with Brett Blau. And so, but it was ma mainly my brainchild and then it was fairly easy to implement changes. The more people are involved, the more desires and, and, and wishes you have. Um, and that's how these three apps were created. And then later they were merged anyway, because people realized that, you know, it, we made more trouble than it was worth. Um, so, so we all are, are talking about new ideas, but, but somebody has to, to also tell everybody what the limitations are and if we do a certain thing what the consequences are okay if we if, if we do this additional feature you know this could happen this could happen this could happen who's going to be in charge of all this um, and so we come back to not having a programmer uh, anymore who would be working with us to improve the features uh, Greg Edison worked with me to, to create the app, but he is now gone. He's still available for emergencies, uh, but he's not available anymore to actually implement major changes. That would be you, Joe, who I would have to ask. And then you basically tell me, hey, Guido, if you, know, if you guys want to do this, this is going to be a major headache or it would require this and this and this. Are you, do you have the money? You know, do you want to... Uh, uh, have that responsibility and then we make basically a risk assessment. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. We're going to move on to the next part. Uh, appreciate both Wayne and Guido for your time and presenting this group. I think there's a lot of folks that are going to find some of this pretty exciting.